Hi, my name is Sarah. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we talk about all things music ed from ways to make your students feel successful in music class to bringing more meaning and joy into your classroom, but especially ways to make sure that you are meeting your students where they are and knowing that you can always dive deeper if you want to based on their natural inclinations or things that you think they would really enjoy. Today, we're talking about five different strategies you can use in your elementary school choir to bulk up your musical experience for them without using traditional homophonic harmony. In my first job, I remember I was sort of rebuilding a, um, an ensemble program that included elementary chorus and middle school chorus. And one of the comments I got from a colleague was like, yeah, you know, this group in the past, they, they just sung in unison. You know, they haven't even harmonized. And I thought, okay, Harmony is beautiful, harmony is fun, but harmony is hard <laughs> if you don't have the time to support the tools to be able to teach it. And considering where students are right now at the end of the school year in 2023, like consider the past three years, COVID, masking, a lot of um, restrictions on even classroom singing, sometimes choral programs cut entirely. So <laughs> at this point in, where we are, like just in the world, and I, I'm in Connecticut, but perhaps this is still um, ringing true where you are, students are really not coming into chorus having had a lot of singing experience in the classroom because it hasn't been allowed, because there hasn't been space for it. So I'm really excited to share these strategies with you. I'm employing some of them myself this year with my fourth grade chorus, and they're, they're going swimmingly. So let me share with you five different ways to make your chorus performances more interesting, more fun, for you, your students, your audience, without using traditional harmony. Here we go. Number one, add some movement. So whatever song you're doing, can you add some simple movements to it? For all of these strategies, don't just add it because you think you have to, add it because the audience will think it's cute. There, there really should be a reason beyond that. So for example, my fourth grade chorus at their spring concert coming up in just a few weeks is doing Chocolate Cookie, which is a warm up song sung to the tune of Sarah Sponda. And they're gonna actually sing it twice. We decided this together. I'm a big advocate for getting student input, sort of crowdsourcing ideas. How can we make this song ours? We are gonna sing it once, totally normally, and then we're going to add some movements that we've come up with to make it, um, so to just sort of like make that contrast really funny, sort of this, this very silly song sung in a serious way, and then we're gonna add some movements to Chocolate Cookie. I will add the link to that Chocolate Cookie video below where I learned it from. It's really funny. We, we I originally planned it as a warm up, and it's been a great warm up, but we're gonna add it to our repertoire, and it's gonna be great. Another side note about movement. Um, Whatever you add, like I said before, with not wanting to do it because it's gimmicky or because it's, it's silly or cute or whatever, there has to be an underlying reason in that same vein, you wanna make sure that whatever you are adding to your choral performances is polished and, um, and is their student's best work. You know, given whatever constraints you're working with, I'm working with a time constraint. So we are doing, you know, we're, we're doing three pieces on our, our concert, which is combined with, with other ensembles, but we're doing three and we're doing them well and that's that. Strategy number two, add some simple percussion. I'm gonna keep pulling from my fourth grade concert here because I think we've got these strategies down pat. We are doing a Sumbu Kawaya, which is a piece from Music Play Online, and we are adding rhythm sticks. And there's a whole choreography video on Music Play Online that taught us how to do it. We are modifying a little bit because we're not sitting, we're gonna be on risers, but we each have a pair of rhythm sticks and we are working on simple, slow movement patterns, rhythms, and some, some um, uh, motions that we're going to all be doing in unison, that we're going to split in half and do half and half. We're adding that to a Sumbu Kawaya to make it more interesting, to add another layer to it, making sure though that the rhythm performance with the sticks matches the level of, um, match, matches the vocal level basically. Like they're both done well at the same time. And that's what we're working on these last few weeks is polishing that up. But adding simple percussion can elevate your performance if it's done at the same level as your vocal performances. Don't just add it because I think this would sound good here and let's all just try it out. Yeah, that looks fine. Polish it up. Make sure it's done at the, at, you know, at, at, the, at your standard, right? Make sure that the students are proud of what they're doing and can do it well. Strategy number three, utilize small groups of singers. If you have a piece of music like what we're doing in our fourth grade concert. We're also doing um, Funga Alafia, which has a section that could be, I didn't have time to make this happen for my group, but if I had the time, I would have I would have brought us there. 
there's a section where they go, with my eyes, I welcome you. With my mouth, I welcome you. With my heart, I welcome you. And that could be done by a solely group, a small group of individuals who step forward and do the stuff, right? And if we sing the song three times, four times, it's very short, you can utilize four groups of singers that incorporate everybody. So each one has their own time. Utilizing small groups like that can build confidence and give you that vocal variety. It's a whole big team effort, right? Chorus is about so much more than singing together. It's about teamwork. It's about um, goal setting. It's about sharing emotions and expressing it oneself together. So giving them these opportunities to be successful and have fun in ways that are attainable given our constraints is so important. Strategy four, and be careful with this one. I've done it in the past with success, but you don't want to go overboard. Adding a few props. Perfect example, several years ago, I had a fifth and sixth grade chorus who sang A Million Dreams from The Greatest Showman. And we used colorful scarves when we sang the chorus and we just waved them very simply back and forth. It is not to be complicated, but it was a nice visual effect that helped amplify the message of the song. And at the end, we, I think we threw them either out or up into the air, something that just ended, you know, it was a wonderfully lovely, peaceful, colorful, beautiful ending, but in a way that's going to not take away from, again, our musical goal, which is to sing well and share ourselves with our audience. Strategy five, pick pieces for your group that have secret harmony in them. So pieces that have layers or interjections. Perfect example is tango. Um, we sang tango in a fifth and sixth grade group a few years ago, and we all start off in this piece by singing in unison. And then, the piece, um, uh, just I think the, the rhythm accelerates a bit and you have two halves of your group. One sings and the other follows, but it's the same material they've already sung. So it has this effect, but it's not new material. It's something they already knew. So re, sort of re, um, reconfiguring that and not having them learn, okay, here's another section where we have to now sing in, in thirds and you have to audiate do and here you're on me and whoa, we didn't have time for that. Like we, we just didn't have the instructional time to make that happen. And I'm not gonna apologize for that. You know, if you don't have the instructional time to do it, you're not gonna force it. So Tonga was a great piece. Another example of a piece that has like musical interjections is Shake the Papaya Down. So you have this section in the middle where half your group does shake the papaya, shake them down, shake the papaya, shake them down, something like that. And the interjecting group, has, you know, shake the pup, shake them down, <laughs> shake them down. And it's just this very fun, um, energetic way of, of singing together. And I mean, there is harmony in there, right? Like you're singing two things at once that sound good together, but it's not homophonic. It's this interjection kind of style. And it's easy to, it's not easy to teach, you know, it's not like, boom, I can do it in one day but it's something that was attainable for us. But this like hidden harmony, secret harmonies that are not traditionally homophonic, they're interjections, they're layers, they're things that get students calling and responding to each other. Vocally interesting, students still have to listen to each other, listen and count, they have to be aware of what's going on in the group, they have to be able to work as a team, and then you're, you know, the outcome is still this really interesting choral piece that isn't necessarily traditional, but is still really fun and educationally and musically valid. If this video struck a chord with you, you might be interested in my weekly newsletter, um, A Different Musician, The A Different Musician Community. I will leave a link for that below. It's, it's not really even a newsletter. I try to keep them like bite-sized and manageable, um, but strategies, resources, tips, tricks, anecdotes, things that I've done in my classroom that are really, um, really going well. Um, you can sign up for that below. Yeah, it's a weekly thing that I send out and um, it's especially great if you are like a new teacher, if you are coming from a non-music education background, so I don't have a music education degree, I have music degrees and I went and got certified later, if you're someone like me like that. If you are not certified and you are just, you were hired and now you have to teach music and what do you do? Uh, my email list would be really, really great for you. So you can sign up for that below. I have a TPT store, I have a bunch of free resources, I have several you know, paid resources, of course, I have a blog all kinds of things that I have out there to help people who are like me, you know, I'm going on 10 years in the classroom now, but when I started, you know, I was, I was starting from scratch at a new school with no curriculum. And yeah, I just, I wish I could have had, 
a community, you know, and that's what I aim to do with my email list. So if you think that would be interesting to you, sign up below, have a gorgeous day and happy music making. Happy music making.